next section. We are now on urinary hydrogen, ammonium, and phosphate ions. Urinary hydrogen, ammonium, and phosphate ions. Okay, just, just a brief warm-up for people that... I'm not an anatomist, so I can't help you a lot with this, but I'm going to go through it a little bit. The bloodstream, the way, the way metabolites or toxic substances or anything else gets into the urine, the bloodstream goes through the kidney. It goes through this anatomical device called the glomerulus, where the small particles in the blood can find their way into the kidney tubules, which lead to the bladder, and that's where you store the urine. So the, the fluid that may become urine goes through the glomerulus and down the kidney tubule. And it turns out that all the small molecules in your body go down this tubule. But the kidney has each tubule surrounded by cells whose job it is to get all the important stuff back into the bloodstream. It seems, it seems at first a little strange, but you do this. You send all the metabolites in your blood that happen to go through the kidney down this pipe, and then the cells spend a lot of energy getting the important ones, like the glucose and the fatty acids, back into the bloodstream. The toxic substances, they don't get back in usually, and they leave them go, and that's how the toxic substances get out of the body. Now, we talked, we talked about we talked about the lungs and how they could regulate the pH, how you could have respiratory compensation. It can be alkalotic or it can be acidic. You know, you can you can make the blood more acidic. You can make it more alkalotic by changing the rate and the depth of your breath. That doesn't work over the long haul. That can help compensate, and that's what it is, compensation. But the maintenance of the pH of the blood over the long haul, it's the job of the kidney. So if you don't have a kidney that functions, you're not going to regulate your pH and you're going to die. If you want pH regulated over the long haul, you've got to use the kidney. And what the kidney does is it senses constantly what the pH of blood is. If there's too much hydrogen ion in the blood, the kidney will just simply send more of it into the urine. And if there's not enough in the blood, the kidney will retain acid. Now, we're constantly, every day, we're an acid machine. We produce acid all day long. All kinds of that. All those acids we showed you at the beginning of the, this chapter, we're producing those all the time. So there's no problem with getting acid. And then the kidney is going to regulate how fast it gets rid of that acid, and that's going to maintain our blood pH. When you have metabolic, ac metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, the lungs compensate for it, but to get better, you have to have the kidneys functioning to change the amount of bicarbonate in the blood, to change the pH of the blood. And that's the job of the kidney. Now, we're not going to get in all that, but we're going to talk about two ways that the kidney gets rid of acid. The first way, I want to show you this old picture because they have a formula in the book. They have for dihydrogen phosphate and monohydrogen phosphate. And I'm sorry, I told you the pKa was 6.8. They're using 7.2. I don't know, 6.8, 7.2. It doesn't make much difference. It's in the biological range. Uh, let me get that picture. Let me here it is. Now, this is, we're not talking about a hepatic cell now. We're talking about a reaction that goes on in the kidney. When the kidney wants to get rid of acid, it simply uses this monohydrogen phosphate, turns it into dihydrogen phosphate. How does it do that? It makes the acid more urine, more, it makes the, the fluid in the kidney tubules more acidic. And when it does that, when you get more acid, the protons bind to phosphate, and the phosphate can go out in the urine. The, the pH, the pH of the urine that you generate can be between 4.5 and 8. So you can have alkaline, you can have a basic urine or an acidic urine. It can get a lot more acidic than it gets basic. 
But this is one way you buffer acid to get it out of the body. The second way, I kind of showed you a picture of it when we started out this chapter. Here we have a picture of the kidney, and we have this ammonium here. This is ammonium, and this is ammonium iron. I'm sorry, that's ammonia, like an A at the end. This is ammonium, like U-M at the end. Ammonium ion, ammonia. Notice the hydrogen ion is combining with the ammonia to make ammonium ion. This is another way you get acid out of your body. And we have a problem here that we ask you to do. We ask you to tell us at physiological pH, which of these two compounds exist. We gave you a pKa equal to 9.25. I'm going to put that up here. Okay. Well, for those of you really sharp, if I give you a pKa of 9, anytime you've got a weak acid, which this is, and it's salt, Immediately you think henderson hasselbach equation, and we did. You think of the reaction, you say, here's the acid, here's the dissociation into a proton and ammonia, ammonia. That fits in, this is the acid, so that's the denominator here. This is the salt of the acid, so that's the numerator here. Here's the pKa, which I'm going to give you is 9.25. And I'm going to tell you that the pH is 7.4. And the question is, which of these two compounds, ammonia or ammonium ion, is the prevalent compound at that pH? Well, you put it in this equation. And right at this step right here, if you're used to looking at this, you can tell me the answer. Because you say, look, if that's 7.4, 9.25 is is about a factor of two higher. I mean, it's not a factor of two, but it's two higher. So this numerator has to be higher than this denominator. Is that right? Nope, it's not right. You have to bring this down. This term has to be subtracted from this term to get 7.4. So the denominator has to be larger than the numerator. To avoid getting confused like I just did, you go on and work this out. You move the 9.25 to this side of the equal sign. Now you have a minus 1.85 equals the log of ammonia over ammonium ion. But I don't like negative logs. They bother me. So we're just going to change the sign on this. We'll multiply by a minus 1 on both sides. That'll make this a minus the log of ammonium ammonia over ammonium ion. To change it to positive, we'll just simply invert the numerator and the denominator. Remember, the log of x is equal to a minus the log of 1 over x. So I just invert those two, and I've got, now I've got 1.85 equals this ratio here. And I know, if I have 1 here, then I know this ratio is at least 10. If this was 2, I know this ratio was 100. So I already know, looking at this equation, I know that there's more ammonium ion than there is ammonia. But let's go on and work it out. We take 10 to the 1.8 power. We get 71 is equal to ammonium ion over ammonia. So in the kidney, when you're working in the kidney, you're usually, let me find this thing. When you're working in the kidney, with ammonia and ammonium ion, you're really always talking about ammonium ion. In the bloodstream, it's 7.4, so you're always talking about ammonium ion there, too. In fact, everywhere's in the blood, everywhere's in your body, you're talking about ammonium ion. Ammonia is usually a minor component. How this works in the kidney is your body takes an amino acid. It takes an amino group on an amino acid and it hydrolyzes off the amino acid. And the way it comes out of the enzyme reaction is at NH3. 
I mean, you couldn't run this reaction unless you had an amino acid. You get the NH3 off of it, you combine it with a proton, and you make the ammonium ion. So all you have to do, the kidney makes sure that it gets enough of these amino acids, and it takes basic amino acids like lysine. It hydrolyzes off the NH2 group or the NH3 group, and it immediately combines with a proton. The rate of that reaction determines the rate of production of ammonium ion and the production of the rate of acid leaving the body.